Where in time am I meant to be? In the past, to be brutal? In the future, sophisticated? Or right here, where I've the most bearing? Hmm. Why, hello, and welcome to the first installment of Danny's Anecdotes. Hi, I'm Danny the Englishman, and for a long time, before ASMR was even a thing, I have been an ASMR artist. That's right, I've been at the forefront of this breakthrough sort of technology, if you will usually doesn't involve any technology at all. See, I've been doing it in person for as long as I can remember. And before it showed up online around 2012, I was doing it in 1990 when I was seven years old. What was my first experience of doing ASMR for another person? You ask? Well, while I spin this tale, how about I tap on this handy dandy windscreen for you? Seven years old. Hmm. I can barely remember it, but pretty much every ASMR experience I've had is locked away in the old cage. This first experience, I was going to a doctor. He thought he was going to relax me by taking my heartbeat and testing my reflexes, that sort of thing. Little did he know that I relaxed him. Ten minutes in, and he's practically drooling. His coffee doing nothing for him. And he just about passed out from my fantastic skills. But at that time I didn't have much of a language. He was more just tapping. Always sort of been a tapper. But at that point, it was more with my feet. See, I was fidgeting. I fidgeted so much that my muscles and my calves were as big as rocks. And I used these rock muscles to surprise the hell out of this registered physician. In practice for 20 years, he couldn't stand up to my greatness. The rhythmic pace of my stepping on the floor did him in. Well, after that, my mum tried to find another doctor. And um, it was just one after another. Falling to my skills. Now, you understand that when I learned that my fidgeting in my legs were that powerful, I stopped using it altogether. I had to challenge myself, you see. Because I knew I was great, but how great was I? I was about to find out. That's when I did a lot of this. Just side to side. I just do this right in front of a person's face. No matter how many diplomas they had. Give me five minutes. Twice as quick as my leg effects. And they were toast. A little bit of finger fluttering. A little bit of thumping. Yeah. This is just the thump. This is just a flutter. And they were gone. 
What were some of the most dangerous times where I had to use ASMR to practically save somebody's life? You ask? Well, this one time I was out on a jog and I saw this man. I almost went right past him, I was going so fast, but he was groaning out in pain. And um, I stopped and looked down. He was grabbing at his, um, his legs. Yeah, he's, um, at first I thought it was his thigh muscle, but then I found out it was his lower leg. Somebody had totally stolen his stuff. He got jumped and in trying to defend himself, he made it a little bit worse. They took a little bit of a bat to him. Right. It was a bit gruesome, but you see, I, even though I saw a bit of bone sticking out, I kept my cool. I bent down, took my earbuds out, and um, after a quick set of uh, questions, see how he was doing, I just got to work. I told him that I was an ASM artist. And this is when I was 14 years old, right? This was before they even had the term. I don't need to tell you that this means that I made up the term ASMR before I even knew what it stood for, before I was online. I was the first, it's true. But no matter. I, um, I started with the finger flutters, just the flutters. I said, sir, I bent down to about 10 inches from his face so I'd get some, some good sound from my, my voice to his ears, yeah? I said, sir, you're going to be all right. Danny's here to save you. And as he sometimes cried out in pain, I said, sir, please focus on my fingers. This might save your life. Now, was he losing fluids? Maybe. But there's nothing that puts the body and mind at ease as much as ASMR. It was a bit zany that I was using those those letters before I even knew what they stood for, right? But, nevertheless, it's true. So here I was, tapping at this gentleman's ears. And he was a bit argumentative at first, you know, he was in a bit of pain. But two minutes in, he was quiet as a baby. And then, I knew. I was the originator of ASMR. The point of this story is that I'm nothing short of fantastic when it comes to relaxing people. And even people that have broken skin, right? You're losing fluids and a bit of bone sticking out. Yeah. Are no match for my soothing demeanors, right? And I say demeanors because I've got all sorts of voices that I can do, but I don't want to blow your mind too much. I'm going to stick to just this voice for the rest of these stories, all right? Needless to say, before emergency services got there, you'll come think of it. Can't think of it. Yeah, the big red truck didn't even make it there. So, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. So, I mean, I kind of remember it sometimes, like the emergency services, like the ambulance, um, got there and, you know, took them in, made sure it was all right, patched them up. But as it happened, I was just doing my flutters and my, my um, lumpy finger sounds, right? A bit by soft speech. 
and he was so quiet, like a baby again, that he had stopped all sort of complaining about pain. It didn't look good, but you would have thought he was completely fine by the sound of him. He was practically asleep. I don't need to tell you that. I know. I'm nothing short of fantastic with this, and um, I don't say that in uh, like a bragging way. I just, uh, it's the truth. I can't help it. I mean, I made up the time at ASMR before. You know, it was a thing. I've just got these powers. It's just, it just fires left and right. My, my uh, creative juices are flowing, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not bad. All right. But this gentleman, he was so quiet, and he stopped complaining so many times. You know, he tried to start again, but you know, probably because I, I I tried to set the bone when I didn't know what I was doing. But um, anyway, I called him back down again and again. You know, so I started to lose my cool, but I, I regained it, and so he did as well. And um, so, in a sense. After about 30 minutes of relaxing this gentleman, he'd said, it's been a long time since, uh, since they've been called. Where are they? You know, where are the emergency services? And I said, looking up, stopping for a sec, yeah, it has been a while. Like, they usually come quicker than this, yeah? Like, when did you call? Is what I asked. And the guy said, I didn't call. I thought you called. And at this point, I had to start at my fingers. Um, a bit more focused manner because he was starting to freak out again so yeah I do admit that I didn't call either so I spent the next five minutes doing a bit more intensive sessions of his fingers yeah, so he could calm back down and then 35 minutes in yeah still no emergency services because I still hadn't called and he still hadn't called because I didn't think about it, but his phone was still in. My phone was right in my pocket, but you know, when you're focusing on trying to induce tingles in another person, it's just how it is, and you can't be bothered with like calling officials in or whatever. You know, I mean, I think. I was a bit anti-authoritarian or whatever, like, after I had, like, broken the wills of so many doctors when I was little, see, so I didn't have too much respect for their profession. To this day, I still don't respect doctors very much. But the magic of tingles prevailed, because this guy's leg did heal. in about five years and then he was fine and he thanked me uh, sometimes in between like angry phone messages but sometimes he would thank me anyway yeah <laughs> oh it was a magical time magical time so let's see that's when I was seven and then when I was fourteen And then, when I was 22, I had this couple I knew. Now, I wasn't married, still aren't, but this couple I knew, they got married. They had quite a, um, an interesting courting session. Lots of interesting things happened. There were other people entwined in the story, and uh, long story short, they ended up together, right? I'm very happy. 
and um, now they've got lots of kids. But back then, um, you know, they still wanted to make sure that their um, future was secure. So they were still learning each other. And um, anyway, during one of their arguments, of course they called me because um, they didn't have money for proper mediation or uh, what they what most people call proper mediation but of course I was better than that because I've got my fingers and my voice and my voice could melt butter in Greenland yeah Greenland's the cold one by the way not Iceland but my mouth my, my voice could melt um, stone probably I haven't tried so they call me up and I come over and uh, oh let's try this and I come over and I had something like this actually so I brought it over and once in a while I have um, some silly little implements and um, to sort of pace things out make sure that people are thinking properly yeah. So here I am, making these sounds, left, right, right, left, panning back and forth, right. And here they are saying, what are you doing? We're in the middle of an argument. Can we talk about the argument? And I said, shh, focus on the sound. Right, focus, focus. Forget about your troubles, you know. Did some positive affirmations, right. Some that were um, just straight up lies, but you know, whatever. Because what heals people in the moment, I find, is not always a truth, but more just a feeling. You know, they want they want um, they want to feel fuzzy inside and on the outside as well. Sometimes, just all around, and they need to be reassured that they're a good person even if they aren't you know but that's that's the role as an avenue as an artist I think to give you as a person some um some dignity right when you're not sure if you're a person anymore but see where I am making my sounds back and forth forth and back and um, they're lulled, they're, they're lulled so much so that they just fall into each other's arms, right? And I don't mind saying that they were married within two weeks, right? And that wasn't their plan, huh? but after I get in front of people, their worlds change. Yeah. Their worlds change. It's the magic of believing. Believing you're fantastic. And that's why I believed that. I wasn't sure if I was, but now I know I'm fantastic. And I don't, I don't think there's anyone that's quite as skilled as me in person at least and I try and translate that as much as I can over the camera and the microphone and the lights right to you because I can't be everywhere at once God knows but if I could I firmly believe the world wouldn't have any problems world peace would be a thing and it'd be because I was there everywhere all the time so, the next best thing, since I'm not an omnipotent being yeah, yet, is I can put it on recording for you. And hopefully, I've got good enough equipment to translate. And I'll try and make it more realistic over time 
because I can gather some resources myself. Uh, I've gathered quite a bit, but I could use a bit of help from you at this point, I'll be honest. Because, um, you know, it's amazing how often uh, people don't pay you when they're trolling on the floor about to fall asleep. And my skills are so fantastic that I can do that with just about everyone, no matter their state before him. But, I mean, when you have that much power that people fall asleep within mostly 10 minutes, you know, that's powerful. And I'd wait around till they woke up, but it's, it's hours and hours, you know. I just don't have the time. I'm too fantastic to just sit around people sleeping all the time to, you know, when they're awake, ask them for some bit money. So um, I'm just trying to do it this way. All right. Yeah, let's try this. So that was um, age 20. Right, so that couple, they got married within two weeks, and um, I think that that's because of me, that's because of me, and some people said they were punch drunk in love or something, and it was just, uh, you know, it was just Danny, it was just Danny's doing, I heard a couple of, um, a couple of whispers like that, but I like to say, the love was always there, right? and I may have brought it out, um, made it excel, just um, multiplied it, sort of, because of my fantastic sounds and voice, but I think it was always there, deep, deep down, yeah, they do, they do ask me to come round every now and then so that um, they can stand each other, you know, and uh, that's all right. But it's, um, that's how the cookie crumbles, yeah. And once again, they basically every time fall asleep and I've got to remain unpaid because I'm not sitting around for 10 hours until they wake up. I have had many a people so I've been in university that had to skip class afterwards because they were just so relaxed and so thankful. But it's just um, it's just the magic that I can give to others. Yeah. I don't even need these tools. I'll tell you that much. I can do it on my collarbones. Okay, that's why I on my collarbones all day. So, that's enough stories for now. Danny's anecdotes. You know, I think sometimes I can put myself to sleep. That's how that works. But, I mean, how can you resist? A voice like, like mine. Right. A voice like mine, I just... There's no coming back from it. Every now and then, people try and pick fights with me. Because they think I'm full of myself or, or something. I don't know why. But, you know, I get up close. Duck out of a shot's way. And then, uh... Do little tingles by their ears. They fall asleep too. So um, basically, uh, nobody can beat me in a one-on-one -on -one brawl either. So that's that. Yeah, it's a difficult life, you know. When you can relax just about anyone in about a minute, then... Um, what sort of challenges do you have, you know? I remember um, teachers trying to get me their tenon papers or something. 
and I would just make them forget their train of thought, their train of thought, by um, just doing this. Bit of this, bit of that. Sometimes I just do math clicks. I just make sounds up on the spot. Just do a bit of penning with it. And, um, that's it. You know, that's common one. Tongue clicks here. And then sometimes I go like... Yeah, and it's, it's faultless. You know, people forget what they're doing. Um, sometimes they forget what they're doing the next day. Even if they have it written down. They look at their notes and it just something in their head is, 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 is moved around because of all the fantastic sounds I've had in front of them. And um, they just... They just, they can't deal, and the, the what they wrote down doesn't make sense on the paper anymore. The brain scrambled, in the best way, because everyone wants their brains scrambled around in the way that Danny does it. Because Danny does it good. So, in a way, you know, I guess I gave you some more anecdotes than I planned to. But, on the way out, you know. In case you didn't like anything I said, I like now to erase your memory. Dustly. Just pay attention. Do the sounds. And these sounds aren't even penny because I only got one mic hooked up. But that's the best mic I got, yeah. So if you want me to get some better lighting. been proven that even older the cell phone yeah, the deli like the iKin work wonders so don't even fret don't fret about it if you're in pain if you're stressed if you've got exams or whatever like uh, you got, especially if you got stuff and my sounds and if I forget to do certain sounds it's all the better because I often make the best sounds when I forgot what I planned to do so just what can you do